What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another amazing episode on the One Rental at a Time channel. Today, I get the privilege of asking Mike some questions because, and by the way, if you have not saw the video from yet, I think it was yesterday that Mike posted it. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, Mike, but it's a video from 2019. Mike was doing a presentation at a real estate event, and he really took a deep dive into his story, his journey. I'm talking about it in great detail. There were things, although I've known Mike for a couple of years now, there were things I learned in that video that I, I didn't know. And so yeah. I want to talk specifically to some of those things today because I think it's going to have a direct impact on many of you viewers and how you look at your current journey and how to even get beyond some of these roadblocks that many of you have had, have had in your journey. And so with that being said, Mike, one of the first things that I want to extract from this video is you talked about being a platinum Sky Miles guy on two different airlines and gold on a third, which lets me know you were traveling quite a bit, man, for, for, for quite some time, um, you know, in your sales career while still building your real estate business. And the thing that was glaring to me is that many people in corporate America today say that they don't have time to really build out their portfolio. Yeah. And what's really funny about that story, you know, being platinum on two and gold on a third is I, I'm almost allergic to flying. It's, it's work for me. It's stressful. I hate, I hate every mile. I feel every bump. It's not <laughs> enjoyable. And I've done a million, almost a million miles, or I've done a million miles across all the airlines. I'm almost done a million miles on one airline. Um, and it's just was my chosen profession. It's how I chose to, to, you know, maximize my income. So that needs to be said. The other thing I want people to realize is I have a saying that you've probably heard of my channel. I don't know, every month or so it, I call it every day is Saturday. What I want people to realize is that's not a cute saying to me. That is something I have felt for 15 years. Because when you're an executive and you had global responsibilities, you don't have weekends. You have a weekend. You have one day, which for me was Saturday. Because if you're going to go to Asia or Europe or South America or Australia or any anywhere else around the world, you're leaving Sunday. So for the better part, like, I mean, uh, if a normal year is 52 weeks, I would have lost at least 35 and probably 45 Sundays wow. to travel. So when I tell you every day is Saturday, that's not a cute saying. That's like, that That really, that I feel that every time I say that. Yeah. So again, to go back to your really question is, I would work somewhere between 50 and 60 hours, not not including flying time, which if you've ever flown to Australia, you know, it's like 15 hours or to Asia is 13 and Europe is 11 or whatever. So um, the other thing to say about this is I would travel at least three times a week, meaning I would go city to city to city and I would come home Friday. That was a rule. I had to be home Friday. Friday, I had to be at San Francisco airport by 5 p.m., 6 p.m. at the latest. Because I had to have Saturday, right? And unfortunately, what that likely meant is that I was exhausted. I was beaten up. As a guy who stresses out with every air mile, I was a wreck. And that Saturday, for the better part of a decade, was the Saturday we chose to go to Fresno. I mean, I just made it happen. And, you know, we were, I was looking every day. I looked every day for almost 10 years at a buy box. I tried to network. I tried to do all these things, but... I mean, if, and, oh, by the way, raising a family, right? Let's not forget that married, raising a family on top of all of those responsibilities. So it, you know, I don't want to hear, I don't have time. Yeah. You, you have it, right? 20 minutes a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Just shut up. And, you know, I've, I've been there. I know it's, you sleep less. You, you, you make time. So it was, I'm glad you picked that up. And I was also glad I found that video. Right. I was a video from 2019. It was the first time that presentation was the first time I shared with the world mm -hmm. um, one rental at a time. The book had just been written. I had just gotten copies of the book at that event. It was the first place they were sold was at that event with Jim Ingersoll. I'm forever grateful for him giving me that opportunity. Yeah. And um, 
what I would really like people to watch is, has anything changed since early 2019? Have I morphed into a different person? Has the story kind of convoluted and been different? And hopefully the answer is not even a little bit, because when you speak the truth, the truth doesn't change. So, so that's that's something I hope happened. I, I may. So I agree with 100 percent of everything you said. I did make one observation that I believe is slightly different now than it was then. You want to know what that is? Of course. Please. I think you were lighter in that moment. Ah. And I don't mean <laughs> weight wise. I mean, like I was in shape, man. I was in no, shape. No, 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 no. I see the guns out today. Like that's not even what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that no, seriously, you had this, uh, you had this peace in this. Not that you don't have it now, right? But but I think you just grown accustomed to what you do now, which we all do at some point, right? It, at some yeah. point, even though it's not work, it becomes work. In 2019, when I saw you on that stage. I witnessed a man who had transitioned from a place that uh -huh. he probably carried a lot of weight in his life. Oh and yeah. For the first time in a very long time, maybe even call it forever. You were light as a feather on that stage, man. And uh, I was unburdened. That's for sure. Yeah. I, yeah. you're right. I, I re again, that was the very, very, very first time. So I think that presentation was recorded in April. It might've been May. Um, and I left in February, right? Wow. So I, you know, I go through it. I get that little depression, blah, blah, blah. I come out of it. And um, yeah, I was, I was free. Yeah. I mean, one rental at a time, the community that we've built over the last five or six years wasn't a thing. I had just written a book. I think I had, I obviously had a YouTube channel, but it was probably sub 1000. And I just let it roll. Jim said, tell your story. So I told the story and you're right. When I think about what you just said, lighter. And first off, yeah, I was probably 35 pounds lighter then and in better shape, but that's, I understand what you're saying. But I just want to acknowledge, I want to put that in my own mind that I'm 35 pounds heavier than I was in 2019. So thank you for that. Hey, you, you said that, not me. I couldn't tell from the shirt you had on, so. No, I was, I, that was, I, I was probably in the best shape of my life. I was wow. doing CrossFit five days a week. I was in the top 5% of my age bracket. I was, I had an engine and was pretty strong, but I digress. Okay. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting when you say lighter, cause I know what you mean. It's not that I have a burden today. It's not a burden, but it does. It, I have a mission now. What I didn't have in 19 was the mission. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't have a thing. I wasn't really helping people. I was just sharing my story, which is very different. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I didn't know what would resonate. I didn't know. Frankly, you know what's really weird? I just thought about this. I didn't know what my superpower was, mm. right? My superpower is focus and daily discipline. It's obvious now, but in that presentation, I hadn't got there yet. Just assumed everybody could be focused and disciplined like me because it comes so naturally. That's the definition of your superpower. Yeah. So I hadn't uncovered that yet. There's so many things now that I think about it that you're right. I now feel like I have a mission and a purpose, which means- you know, it is heavier. It, it, yeah. You're absolutely right. You, 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 that's very true. Yeah. Yeah. It could, could you real quick, Mike, just tell the people what the name of that video is so that everybody could go back and watch it. I will pull it up right now. It is called the story of one rental at a time. In parentheses, it says live 2019. So the story of one rental at a time. And yeah. the thumbnail is the story of ORAT. Okay. If yeah. anybody has been rocking with Mike for any period of time, trust me, you want to go back and watch this video. You'll see everything that we're talking about and so much more. You have your own personal takeaway. It was like almost a one hour talk. So there's a lot to extract from it, but you really get to get into the mind of where Mike was at through his entire journey of that, that 15 years of building and how he started from the 40,000 bucks and literally taking you through and dissecting every single deal and the progression of his whole entirety. So um, it was just really fruitful, man. I sat there, you know, compelled and I watched the entire thing. And uh, wow, I, I got, I mean, seriously, like after knowing you for two or three years now, yeah, that, I, I just, I know you even better now, right? Yeah. 
I saw another side of Mike that I haven't seen in the last three years that I think was very specific to that moment. Yeah. Right. I'm glad that you were able to capture that moment. So, so fresh off of what you had been experiencing and enduring up to that point. Yeah. You know, I, I'm glad I shared that. Uh, thank you for watching this. You know, it means a lot that you would watch it, right? Cause it was an hour. You're a busy guy. You got lots going on. You and I talk every week. You're, you're a huge part of the channel. You come out to the event in Vegas, but then for you to go watch that, that just means the world to me. Cause again, that was the first time I'd ever shared publicly the story. And um, I'm glad you got to see it. Uh, it it yeah. means a lot that you did that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So, so going back to that, the time piece, right? Because you, you touched on it a bit. Um, I think a lot of people are probably stuck in a cubicle somewhere, right? Or albeit in the corner office at their house. And they just feel like from the moment I roll out of bed, I log on and I don't get off this thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And I got meeting after meeting after meeting. Where, where do I, where do I find this time? Right now, now when I think about the complexity of what you were doing, not only were you at some point glued to a desk and or a computer, you were also on and off the bird and crossing time zones. And just, that's a whole nother level of complexity when you travel to Europe and lose six hours or travel to Asia and lose 12 or 13 hours, like, and still trying to communicate back with people in the States and continue to move things forward. So what are some practical, tangible steps that you can give people to start looking at their time differently to, to say, no, I do have some time. I just have to make it in this way. Yeah. What I would tell most people, and I don't know if I would have had, I would not have had this answer in 2019. Okay. But today the answer is very simple. We have to come to the agreement that you can find 20 minutes. I believe every adult person, male, female, can find 20 minutes a day to do this. You're doing something that you could stop doing. Worst case, get up 20 minutes earlier or stay up 20 minutes later. I'm not talking hours. I'm talking 20 minutes. Okay, great. I'll give you 20 minutes. And oh, by the way, let's be clear. I want 20 minutes, seven days a week. None of this nonsense about two days a week. It's seven days a week, 20 minutes a day. This is why I harp on the buy box. Because too many investors are all over the freaking place. You can't learn an entire market like Fresno or Vegas or Detroit or Orlando 20 minutes a day. You'll never get anywhere. It all changes too fast. However, if you get micro-focused, micro-focused down to a zip code, an asset type, an asset configuration, an asset size that produces 20 to 40 active listings, you can go through that 20 minutes a day. Notice what changed, what was added, what fell off. And over time, you will become an expert in that micro buy box. The minute you get cute or lazy or think you're smarter than me and add a second box or a second area or whatever, you're going backwards. The only reason I was able to do this with the crazy life that I had is I looked at 93703, three or four bedrooms, two baths, two car garage between uh, 1250, 1250 and 2000 square feet for three freaking years. That is all I looked at. That is all we bought. I ignored everything else. If it wasn't in that micro, it might as well not have existed. So you can find 20 minutes. That is unquestionable. The problem people have, and again, I acknowledge it's my superpower, which I didn't know at the time, I can get remarkably, and let me just tell you this, you have this laser focus and nothing changes from Monday to Tuesday, congratulations, you just got 19 minutes back to do something else. You don't get cute and go, oh, I got 19 minutes, let me look at something else. No, your job is to look at that buy box for 20 minutes, see what changed. If nothing does, move on. It's that simple. Yeah. Give me 20 minutes and get your ass focused. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love everything about what you said, because when I was in corporate America, <clears throat> my probably last seven years as operations manager, I would have to be in by 8, 8.30 by the time we had our steering team meeting, but I had an hour commute. So 
I would get up an hour earlier every day to make sure that I could go through my inbox, see the things that may have come through, quickly analyze the deals, submit my offers to my agent so that by the time lunch rolled around, I should have some uh, yep. electronic contracts to go ahead and execute and then get more feedback later on. And now, in fairness, did I have more agility throughout the day to check my email for maybe more more than most people? Could I slide out and make a phone call? Yeah, but but all things being equal, I got up an hour extra, an hour early, an hour early extra every day, right? So that was the catalyst. Well, let's so, let's say, let's just put one more thing out there, which mm -hmm. may not be obvious for folks. Mm -hmm. These things did not exist when I started doing this. <laughs> they were dumb phones. So I could make phone calls and text. Yeah. I couldn't sign documents. I couldn't see my email. I couldn't do any of this. Yeah. And oh, by the way, I started this with dial up. That's how old I am. So they're all. <laughs> so stop it with it. It would take me five minutes to get online. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 No, that's a good point. Because now that I think about it. For, for my first probably eight or nine years, it was the same thing. Like I had to be physically in front of a computer, right? Like I couldn't do all of this from my DocuSign didn't exist. That wasn't a thing. So, so that was one thing. The other thing is, and which is why we've always been in agreement about the buy box. I tell my students that practice don't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. Exactly. So what happens is you can get into this habit of mistaking activity for productivity because mm -hmm. You found an agent. You're so excited. They send you 1,300 new listings every day. By the time you get through the first 30, you got another 400 of them to look at the following day. And it's because they're sending you virtually the entire state. And you have under the mistaken impression because you're scouring through this stuff every day that you're being effective. But you're not. Yeah. You're, you're not. not fast, right? Well, you can, you, anywhere you go stuff. backwards. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And, and you get fatigued from even looking at all that stuff. It paralyzes you. And then you end up doing nothing, right? So the buy box is definitely important. And I was just telling somebody this the other day. I would much rather see two deals in my inbox the entire week and know that they were the right two deals than to get flooded with hundreds of properties every day and for me to fool myself into thinking that I'm being more productive that way. 100%. It's about, and again, it, do, it doesn't have to be this way forever. But again, as somebody who's got 20 plus years on them, I looked at my micro buy box for three freaking years. Now, could I have could I have evolved a little bit earlier? Yes, I'm broken. I am freaking broken. But it should have been, I mean, no less than a year and a half. Yeah. No less than two. It takes time. And the last thing I will say about this that really pisses me off is sometimes I run into people who have money and they think they could jump the line. Mm. I don't care. Put the money in a money market account and do the freaking work. Yeah. You know, buy. If you just because you have money doesn't mean you're not going to get taken or get it taken advantage of. In fact, you might. If you just trust somebody to tell you a deal and you haven't done the work, you're gambling. Yeah. 100%. Do the work. No jump on the line. One hundred percent. Yeah. I. You know. I'm very sensitive to that. I have a rule that if I wouldn't put my investors' money into a deal, I wouldn't put my money in. And if I think everybody adopted that, because most people are scared to death, one, to even get money from other people, secondly, to lose it. So if you if you have that level of, you know, sensitivity around someone else's money, then be a great steward over yours as well. You should treat yours no different. And so if it's not good enough for somebody else, then it shouldn't be good enough for you, because I agree with you, Mike. People that have their own money give themselves permission to do a lot of stupid things with that money. And you have to understand that whatever arena that allowed you to be successful and maybe stack a quarter million bucks is not called real estate. So at some point you became proficient at that job or business or career enough to have the success that you've had. Well, in order to do that, then you got to become proficient enough in real estate to have the success that you desire to have. And so we got to stop giving ourselves permission to jump the line just because we think we have the means in order to do so. It, it's one of the most dangerous things I've seen um, is folks who have money and they have money and they perceive no time mm -hmm. and they put that together and it's like, Ooh, you're, you're going to get got eventually is yeah. what, how I feel. And, and that's unfortunate. And the truth of the matter is 
that's really laziness at the end of the oh, day. 100. Right. I mean, it, it's laziness. It's, it's, it's sounds sexier and it's dressed up and packaged a different way, but it's lazy. It's and it's laziness. 100%. Lazy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. That, um, that, that, I, I just love that I found that and, and shout out Jimmy and yourself for letting me publish that. Um, the thing that I, I really hope comes across is the story's the same, right? When you have a story to tell and you tell it and it's the same story six years later, it's because it's the truth. 100%. Right? 100%. It's not dressed up as something else. The, the good, bad, and the ugly is there, right? Nora Strive is a complete failure. The first, the first tenant, it's been the same way since day one. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, it was, it was really refreshing again. I just, I prompt everybody to go and watch that video. You will extract a lot of gems from it. Um, the clarity that Mike had in that moment mm -hmm. is the clarity that many of you need right now, as you're in the corporate bondage, trying to figure yeah. out how to get out. And, um, I wish that I had a video like that. I think that's why I was so drawn to it, Mike, because I don't have like that video right after leaving corporate America five right. almost, six years ago. And um, yeah. yeah, I identify with a lot of what you had to say, you know, and, and that's why we lack empathy for people that just make excuses because it, listen, I used to make the joke that, that I did real estate full time and worked at corporate on the side. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I had two full time businesses. It's 168 hours in a week. I promise you between corporate, which I was giving 50 to 60, I was putting another 40 into my real estate business. It's 168 hours in a week. And to mm -hmm. Mike's point, you know, maybe you need to maybe maybe you don't have it during the work day. That's fair. But but you're talking to somebody having frivolous conversation for 20 minutes. You're, you're watching Netflix for 20 minutes too long. You like there's a myriad of different places that you can extract this 20 minutes if it's important enough to you, or mm -hmm. you could just keep making excuses, be a wallflower, or even worse, just go out there negligible and pull the trigger on doing something you have no business in doing. But yeah. it's, it's no, it's no magic sauce to this. If it's important enough, you got to make the time and you got to be consistent in the activity that you take during that time. Yeah. To be clear, folks, what I want from you is two hours and 20 minutes a week. 20, 20 minutes times seven, it's two hours and 20 minutes. Get focused, stop being lazy, just do the work. Yeah. It's that simple. Brian, where can people find you? Yeah, Brian Adamson, official everywhere, YouTube, Instagram. I love meeting you guys. Keep shouting me out. Yeah, folks, do me a favor. Follow him on Instagram and YouTube. He's a lot of fun. I'm constantly reposting his stuff because this man just gets it and he's helping so many. Brian, you're amazing. Thank you. Appreciate you, bro. Mm-hmm.